The prevailing mainstream theory currently holds that approximately 13.8 billion years ago, this universe was born in a massive explosion, and time is measured from that moment. However, the emergence of Webb is gradually overturning the hypotheses that humans have believed for decades. Launched into the sky on December 25, 2021, and entering orbit around the Sun-Earth system on January 25, 2022, James Webb has become a time machine rewinding humanity's past. Webb is the most modern and advanced eye of humanity as it orbits Earth at a distance four times that of the Moon, silently gazing into the deep space of the universe. It was hoped that Webb would find evidence to illuminate theories that have existed for hundreds of years, but unexpectedly, it is contributing to breaking down humanity's virtual walls about space. Out there, in the deep dark forest with thousands of twinkling lights, Webb has discovered the first newborns of the cosmic womb. They are ancient galaxies that have existed for 33 billion years. They are the farthest galaxies humanity has ever known. Once again, humanity will have to sit down and reconsider the theories it has painstakingly built. And now, welcome back to our journey through the reverse space. And this is Eyes 200 Mem, where mysteries are revealed in the light of science. Pandora's Cluster, Abel 2744. In the latest report on November 21st, an international team led by researchers from Pennsylvania used JWST's spectral data to confirm distances and explore the characteristics of ancient galaxies. They discovered the second and fourth distant galaxies in the Pandora Cluster, Abel 2744. These ancient galaxies, located approximately 33 billion light-years away from us, provide crucial insights into the formation of primitive galaxies. Pandora, Abel 2744, is a unique galaxy cluster. On February 15th, on NASA's official information page, astronomers revealed deep field images from the James Webb Space Telescope, including unprecedented details in a dark space region they named Pandora, Abel 2. 744. At that time, Webb's view displayed three very large galaxy clusters merging to form a supercluster. The combined mass of these galaxy clusters creates a strong gravitational lens, the natural magnification effect of gravity, allowing the observation of galaxies further away in the early universe by using the cluster as a magnifying glass. James Webb is not the first eye to discover it. Previously, under the limited vision of Hubble, research groups from various universities had explored the core of this galaxy cluster. However, due to its limited capabilities, Hubble could not provide detailed parameters. Nevertheless, those passionate about the mysteries of space have never given up on it. Ancient mythology about Pandora narrates the curiosity and discoveries of humanity in distinguishing the past and the future, which I think is a fitting connection to the new frontiers of the universe that Webb is unveiling, including this deep field image of the Pandora Cluster. When the images of the Pandora Cluster were first sent by Webb, the research team was truly astonished. There were too many details in the foreground cluster and too many distant lensed galaxies, making it seem like they were getting lost in the image. Webb exceeded the expectations of all those who had anticipated its capabilities. The new view mode of Pandora's cluster stitched together four quick snapshots taken by Webb into a panoramic image, displaying around 50,000 near-infrared light sources. In addition to magnification capabilities, the gravitational lens also distorts the shapes of distant galaxies, making them look very different from the foreground galaxies. The lens of the large galaxy cluster is so massive that it warps the structure of space, enough for light from those distant galaxies passing through that distorted space to also appear distorted. After careful study, they truly uncovered some remarkable mysteries. According to researchers, unlike other galaxies confirmed at this distance appearing as red dots in the images, the newly discovered galaxies appear larger and resemble a peanut and a cotton ball. The lead author, Bing Ji Wang, a postdoctoral scholar at Penn, says, 
There's very little information about the early universe, and the only way to learn about that time and test our theories of galaxy formation and early development is with these very distant galaxies. Because light from these galaxies takes a very long time to reach Earth, it provides a window into the past. The research team estimates that the light detected by JWST originated from two galaxies when the universe was about 330 million years old and traveled about 13.4 billion light years to reach JWST. However, researchers note that these galaxies are currently approximately 33 billion light years away from Earth due to the expansion of the universe during this time. Joel Legia, an assistant professor of astronomy and astrophysics at the University of Pennsylvania and a member of UNCOVER says, The light from these galaxies is extremely ancient, about three times older than Earth. These primitive galaxies are like beacons, with light bursting through a very thin layer of hydrogen creating the early universe. Only through their light can we begin to understand the strange physical mechanisms that govern galaxies near the dawn of the universe. Notably, the two galaxies are considerably larger than the three galaxies previously located at these extreme distances. One is at least six times larger at about 2,000 light years across. For comparison, the Milky Way is approximately 100,000 light years across. But, Wang said, the early universe is thought to have been very compressed. So, surprisingly, the galaxy is as large as it is. Wang explains, Previously discovered galaxies at these distances are point sources. They appear as a dot in our images. But one of ours appears elongated, almost like a peanut, and the other looks like a fluffy ball. It is unclear if the difference in size is due to how the stars formed or what happened to them after they formed, but the diversity in the galaxy properties is really interesting. These early galaxies are expected to have formed out of similar materials, but already they are showing signs of being very different from one another. Properties and Implications Two galaxies among the 60,000 light sources in the Pandora Cluster were discovered in one of the first deep field images taken by JWST in 2022, its inaugural year of scientific operation. This space region was chosen in part because it is located behind some galaxy clusters that create a natural magnification effect called gravitational lensing. The gravitational pull of the combined mass of the clusters warps the space around it, concentrating and magnifying any light that passes nearby, providing a magnified view behind the clusters. In a matter of months, the Uncover team narrowed down the 60,000 light sources to 700 candidates for further study, eight of which they believe could be among the first galaxies. Subsequently, JWST focused on the Pandora cluster again, capturing the spectra of the candidates, a type of fingerprint detailing the amount of light emitted at each wavelength. Leja explains, different groups are using different methods to search for these ancient galaxies, and each group has its strengths and weaknesses. Focusing on this massive gravitational lens in space gives us an extremely deep window, but it's a very small window, so they're rolling the dice. Some candidates don't have convincing conclusions, and at least one of them is a case of mistaken identity, something much closer to mimicking a distant galaxy. The research teams are very fortunate. It turns out there are these two ancient galaxies. Unbelievable. Researchers also use detailed models to infer the characteristics of these primitive galaxies when they emit light detected by JWST. As predicted by the researchers, the two galaxies are young, with low metallicity, and are rapidly and actively forming stars. The first elements were formed in the cores of primitive stars through the process of fusion. It makes sense that these primitive galaxies lack heavy elements like metals, because they are among the first factories to produce those heavy elements. And of course, they have to be young and actively forming stars to become the first galaxies, but confirming these characteristics is a crucial litmus test for their models and helps validate the entire theoretical framework of the Big Bang. Researchers note that, along with gravitational lensing, 
The powerful infrared capabilities of JWST will be able to detect galaxies at even greater distances, if they exist. Leja states that they have a very small window into this area and haven't observed anything beyond these two galaxies. This could mean that galaxies had not formed before that time, and we won't find anything further out. Or it could mean they were not lucky enough with their small window frame. This achievement is the result of a successful proposal submitted to NASA, outlining the use of JWST in its first year of scientific operation. In the first three submission cycles, NASA received more proposals, four to ten times more, than the available observing time on the telescope allowed, and they had to select only a small fraction of those proposals. Leija's team was thrilled and somewhat surprised when their proposal was accepted because it involved coordination, quick human action, and the telescope focusing on the same object twice. A significant demand for an astronomical telescope in its first year of operation. The pressure was immense as the research team had only a few months to identify the objects to observe. Galaxies in the early universe. Cases like Abel 2744 are not the only remarkable results that James Webb has achieved. In its nearly one year of operation, Webb has discovered over 1,000 galaxies eerily reminiscent of our Milky Way hidden in the early universe. They have shapes resembling warped vinyl records and intricately spiraled arms, copies of the Milky Way that JWST found over 10 billion years ago in the universe's past, during a period when intense galaxy mergers were believed to make the delicately thin and rich variety of galaxies seemingly impossible. However, recent research reveals that disc-shaped galaxies are more than 10 times more common in the early universe than astronomers previously thought. This intriguing discovery, along with other findings, by J points to a deeper mystery surrounding how large galaxies formed and the potential for the first blooms of life in our universe. The lead author of the study, Leonardo Ferreira, an astronomer at the University of Victoria in Canada, states, For over 30 years, it was believed that these disc-shaped galaxies were very rare in the early universe due to the frequent violent collisions that galaxies undergo. The discovery of numerous galaxies by JWST is another sign of the power of this tool and the structure of galaxies forming much earlier in the universe than anyone predicted. Most theories about galaxy formation start from 1 to 2 billion years after the universe's birth, at which point the earliest star clusters are believed to have transformed into dwarf galaxies. These dwarf galaxies then began cannibalizing each other, causing a series of violent galaxy mergers after 10 billion years leading to large galaxies like ours. The Milky Way is a disc-shaped galaxy. With its spiral arms and flattened sombrero-like shape, it is one of the most common types of galaxies in the universe today. However, in the early years of the universe, when it was more crowded and dwarf galaxies were abundant, astronomers long assumed that galaxies like ours would quickly become distorted. However, by using JWST to observe from 9 billion to 13 billion years ago, astronomers have discovered that among the 3,956 galaxies they observed, 1,172 were disc-shaped galaxies similar to our Milky Way. Many of these galaxies existed when the universe was only a few billion years old. The co-author of the study, Christopher Consolis, a professor of extragalactic astronomy at the University of Manchester, notes, Using the Hubble Space Telescope, they believe that disk galaxies were virtually non-existent until the universe was about 6 billion years old. However, the new results from JWST have pushed the formation of galaxies like the Milky Way back to near the beginning of the universe. This implies that most stars exist and form in these galaxies, altering our complete understanding of how galaxy formation occurs. Based on the findings of the research team, astronomers will have to reconsider our understanding of the formation of the first galaxies and how the process of galaxy evolution has unfolded over the past 10 billion years.
The existence of our galaxy within a disk-shaped structure suggests that astronomers often believe they must have favorable conditions for sparking life. If this is true, there is a possibility that the emergence of life may have started earlier in the universe than initially thought. Paradox Fermi. Paradox Fermi raises the question, if the universe is so vast, with billions of sun-like stars, many of which could have Earth-like planets, then why haven't we seen any signs of extraterrestrial life? In other words, why is there no clear communication or evidence of extraterrestrial life despite the universe having the potential to harbor many different alien civilizations? The probability of extraterrestrial life is a perplexing question, and the Fermi paradox remains enigmatic in the mysteries of the human universe. With the time that has passed and advancements in technology, this issue has become more complex. We have discovered thousands of exoplanets to date, indicating that there is a large number of potential conditions for life in the universe. The sheer number of these planets is beyond our imagination, raising hopes for the possibility of life on Earth-like planets. Scientists have also drawn inspiration from extreme forms of life on Earth, believing that extraterrestrial life could exist in harsh environments. Fermi's paradox challenges the reasoning behind why we haven't had direct contact with extraterrestrial civilizations. The limitations of current technology could be one reason. Despite efforts in radio telescopes searching for extraterrestrial life or deep space exploration missions, our technology is still limited. The vastness of the universe restricts the actual area we can cover. We still rely on exploring galaxies near Earth, and these galaxies are just small parts of the entire universe. In addition to technological constraints, the factor of time is a crucial aspect of Fermi's paradox. The emergence of life on Earth is a long, slow process that took billions of years to develop highly complex organisms. Considering the timing of life appearing on Earth, intelligent life on Earth is relatively young in the cosmic timeline. Therefore, other extraterrestrial civilizations may still be in different stages of development or may have gone extinct long ago. The existence of extraterrestrial civilizations may not be in a form we can comprehend. Our definition of intelligent life is based on the characteristics of life on Earth. However, there could be entirely different biological forms or even existences beyond our imagination. This possibility challenges our current approach to identifying and searching for intelligent life beyond Earth. The probability of the existence of extraterrestrial beings is a complex and challenging issue. While current evidence suggests that there may be many planets in the universe suitable for life, our lack of direct contact with extraterrestrial civilizations could be due to challenges such as technological limitations, the factor of time, and the uncertainty surrounding the nature of life. Universe's age could be twice as old. The discovery of ancient galaxies brings about another consequence, skepticism regarding the determination of the true age frame of the entire universe. According to theoretical physicist Rajendra Gupta from the University of Ottawa in Canada, a retired cosmology theory may have a second chance to explain anomalies in our universe. By combining the existing, expanding universe theory with an offbeat explanation, called the Tired Light Hypothesis, Gupta has astonishingly suggested that the Big Bang might have occurred around 26.7 billion years ago. This is twice as old as predictions from current models. The additional years could potentially explain why the farthest observed galaxies appear surprisingly mature, resembling star cities that should only exist for half a billion years. Estimating the age of the universe is akin to guessing a child's birth date based on their height. Objects at a distance appear slightly redder than their expected characteristic light. The most plausible explanation is space expansion, stretching those light waves apart like a stretched out spring. In 2021, the standard or current universe model, known as the Lambda CDM model, estimated the age of our universe to be 13.797 billion years. 
The Lambda CDM model assumes that the universe was created in the Big Bang from pure energy and currently consists of about 5% ordinary matter, 27% dark matter, and 68% dark energy. However, the discovery of evidence of early galaxies in the evolutionary stage of the universe's heightened evolution by NASA's James Webb Space Telescope and the existence of stars like Methuselah, one of the oldest known stars, has left many scientists puzzled. These early galaxies, although surprisingly small and believed to exist only about 300 million years after the Big Bang, have been observed to exhibit levels of maturity and mass typically associated with billions of years of universe evolution, which researchers in this study claim the standard model cannot fully explain. Because light takes time to travel, redder light is older, having been stretched over a greater distance. The reverse growth rate estimate could use this expansion to determine when the universe was a denser volume boiling with concentrated energy. However, this is not the only attempt to explain why distant light appears redder. In 1929, Swiss astronomer Fritz Zwicky suggested that light simply loses energy in such vast space. Less energy means lower frequency and longer wavelengths, altering the spectrum of bright objects at a distance. Essentially, light becomes tired. While Zwicky later made a groundbreaking discovery, establishing a major mystery about dark matter, his tired light hypothesis faced too many issues to be classified, making the expanding universe model the preferred theory. As Gupta points out in his recent proposal, that doesn't mean these two concepts are mutually exclusive. A combination could even help explain why the earliest stars and galaxies seem to be billions of years old. It might also help explain why they appear smaller than expected, despite good mass growth. Gupta's hybrid hypothesis suggests that the universe is larger than we think, having expanded to its size after a past Big Bang event. He starts with two expanding universe models, one based on standard assumptions about the universe's uniform and flat nature, and the second model introduces some adjustments related to what's known as coupling constants. Coupling constants describe the interaction of forces between particles, such as how the electric field of two nearby protons will influence each other's behavior in specific ways. All forces have coupling constants, not necessarily constants, varying with energy. This leaves room for coupling constants to change enough to affect how light operates. If this constant changes over time, our calculations about the age of the universe could be significantly off. Gupta says, our new model extends the time for galaxy formation by a few billion years, making the universe 26.7 billion years old instead of the previously estimated 13.7. One of the issues with the tired light theory is that the energy loss in light waves would correspond to a loss of momentum, affecting the appearance of distant objects. With ancient galaxies appearing unusually small, this conflict could indeed be a reason to reconsider the hypothesis. As is common whenever observations don't perfectly align with expectations, Scientists throw every idea they can think of at the issue to see what might stick. Some are mundane, some are quirky, and some are the exhumation of theories long thought dead to see if they have a heartbeat. While the ultimate explanation remains to be seen, it's almost certain to change the way we look at our universe. Thank you for accompanying us on the adventurous journey to the distant corners of the universe through the sophisticated eyes of the JWST telescope. The images of ancient galaxies unfolded before us like windows to the past, allowing us to revisit the origins of the universe and witness new heights in science. Remember, these discoveries are not just numbers and images on paper. They are keys to unlocking the grandest mysteries of nature. We are gradually unraveling profound questions about our existence in this universe and its formation, bit by bit. If you found it as fascinating and awe-inspiring as we did, don't forget to like, share, 
and subscribe to the channel to continue with us on the next scientific adventures. Thank you for being a part, and we'll meet again in the upcoming journeys. Farewell, and keep fueling your passion for the universe.